Pas les assauts, toi. Ouais. Quoi de l'origine C'est All right. Mr. Friends, who won't be with us tonight, he's uh, just had a baby boy. All right. Yeah, two weeks ago, so he's he's a little he's a little busy. <laughs> he's a little tied up right now, so he won't be with us. All right. First order of business is the minutes from. Uh, Last month's meeting. Uh, let's see. You know, April 12th. Is uh, any changes or corrections to anybody? Anybody have any changes or corrections? All right, I make a motion at the. Accept them as submitted. Okay. I second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The motions are approved. Minutes are approved. I'm sorry. Uh, first order of business is public hearing for. Um, Application building permit for, uh, let's see, 30 Warmer Lane, Cold Spring. Uh, applicant is seeking a variance uh, for a uh, build a 1,560 foot square foot accessory structure with the garage, uh, office, and uh, sp uh, shop space. Uh, someone here to speak to that? Let me just go over to the microphone and explain, tell us who you are, please. That's good. Okay. I just move this over here. Yeah, that's it. Is this on? That's good. Okay, I'm Adam Hurd. Uh, I currently live on Horton Road. And um, I'm moving up Clove Creek. Yes, okay. to 30 Walmer. The, uh, so the existing home has been gone through a, f a few expansions over the years. And part of our renovation is to reorganize it. There's an existing three-car garage um, that's about seven feet higher than the first floor of the house. Right. And part of our pro's work is we're changing the way the driveway comes in and bringing the garage down about seven feet and entering from the other side instead of the side facing the road. What? Why is that? Why are we doing that? Or changing the driveway and everything. Well, it's a long story. The driveway used to be this way, and there were drainage issues that the current that the previous owner was trying to correct. So okay. he moved the entrance down to here, but it kind of created other drainage problems this way, where now water was coming this way between the two, and actually the soil was getting higher than the floor of the house, so the weep poles and the brick were now underground. And so was the, you know, the wood ledger and all this. So we're putting it back the way it was. They've since, um, they've improved the drainage here and we're gonna add sort of a pool to collect the runoff. And then so it you gets- have a collecting pool now. Yes, right. But so we're bringing the driveway. The driveway originally came like this and then at the garage here, we're coming further this way and coming from the other side. Basically, you're improving a drainage problem you have on a property. Excuse me? You're improving a drainage problem you have on a property. Yes. <laughs> the, um, so, so there's a three-car garage and where we gr we'll have a retaining wall here. The garage will, a new garage will come down and you'll enter from this side. And while we're doing that, we expanded the footprint of the building to include an office and a wood shop for hobby work. Um, the, the, the zoning code limits the footprint of a garage to 1,000 square feet. Correct. The, the portion of the building for the three vehicles is still below 1,000 square feet. The issue is that if you include the shop and the office in that, we go over. Right. And it, it, it's all in one building. It's all a contained building. What I'm trying to say is even though you only have a three-car garage, it's one building. You put your shop and your office in the same building. It's one structure. Right. It's one structure. Right. But if it was attached to the house, you wouldn't include the house as part of the garage. Well, 
the building inspector turned you down. Your permit. Right. Well, that's the reason you're here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> if they turned you down, right. you wouldn't be here. Right. Okay. We could, um, I mean, we could break it off, these things, and have a separate building. We are way under on allowed coverage, and there's no limit on how many outbuildings we have. We could also put the uses on top of the garage. There's no limit on that, but now it's just a bigger structure close to the street. So, you know, we really feel this is, you know, it's a much better solution to have it all in one building, all on grade. It's less visible from the road. Um, it's more efficient construction-wise. It's more efficient for heating and cooling. It's less site work, so less impact uh, environmentally. Right. All right. Uh... How close are your nearest neighbors? Um, this is so. This is the garage. Mm -hmm. The closest neighbor is right here, and there's a house behind them here. So there are two lots here. People on this side are, I mean, this lot's enormous, and they're all the way over here. Right. Well, well the uh, neighbors have been notified by, you know, mail, so right. they, and they had ability to go to the town and check the plans and all like that, or be here tonight, right. you know, everyone that's in here tonight or not, but uh, the, to speak on it. So. Right. But the garage isn't moving any closer to our neighbors. Okay. And we're not, this is, it's the only place where really um, change, like the our renovation of the existing building doesn't change the footprint. Okay. Uh, I see you're putting an electric car charging out with it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I know I'm going to need it sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions on this, or any other questions? All right. Well, we're going to I'm going to do is going to go over the um, uh, five factors. Oh. Somebody else want to speak? No. Do you have anything to add? No. Do you want to do the ad? I did want to point sure. out um, just one thing. Okay. Um, so. Just come to the microphone and, and tell us who you are, please. Uh, I'm Beth Sigler, Sigler Henderson Studio. I'm the architect for Adam and yeah. Diana Hurd. Okay. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that the, the view of it from both perks. Um, Excuse me. I'm sorry. Can you get a record mic or? Oh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the, um, the view of it from Perks Boulevard and from Omar Lane, the, the grade slopes down, so there's very little of the structure that is visible from you know, the road or from the neighbor's properties. Um, and I think Adam pretty much yeah, I see no, I see everything else. Plans so here, I more like that. that no, no, the plans are very well done. Trying to explain everything. Uh, I see you fill out the five factors. What the five factors is, is uh, one of the things we use to uh, decide on the variance, whether you can give your variance or not. The variance, well, the variance is, uh, like, somebody comes here, that means they've been turned down by the building inspector. Uh, you didn't come here because you just want to spend time with us. You came here because you got turned down. So we have to decide whether we could give you the variance or not. That's what it's about. So the five factors, I just want to go over them with you, okay? Uh, uh, number one, will an undes uh, undesirable change be produced in a character in a neighborhood, or will a detriment to nearby properties be created by granting this area variance? Uh, you answered that uh, the proposed structure will not produce an undesirable change in the neighborhood. The proposed structure is far from neighboring properties. The height is an average of 18 feet. Uh, what do you mean average? Architect, what do you mean average of 18 feet? Can I stand up, please, and microphone? The, the grade varies, so um, there may be a foot or two of difference from one side of the garage to the other. So um, plus right. or minus maybe a foot at most. Okay, thank you. I was property slopes away from Walmer Lane, further reducing the visibility of the structure from Perks Boulevard or Walmer Lane. The structure is in scale with the surrounding properties and reflects uh, the more rural character of Walmer Lane. Number two, uh, can the benefits sought be achieved by some method feasible to pursue other than area variance? Yes, the benefit can be, achieved, uh, can be achieved by other methods. The only desire is to keep the new construction to a minimum and then, uh, have combined uses in a single accessory structure, replacing the two existing separate and uh, similar garage structures. The proposed garage use is limited to 852 square feet. 
everything with what we decided, you know, even though it, the garage is only going to be 852, the building is over, it's over 1,000 feet. So that, that's, the, that's the problem. Now, yes, the benefit could be achieved by other methods. What other methods? Architect? Um, what other methods? You could um, add, um, you could have two, uh, two buildings. Um, you could, um, it's very difficult to add a garage to the house because of um, the way it's configured, but is it possible? Yes, it would be much more expensive and require a lot of retaining walls. Um, so while it could be um, broken into two buildings, we're really looking at trying to limit construction, um, have a, a smaller shop that can expand into the garage when necessary, and um, keep the office on grade so that you know part of the renovation of the house makes the first floor have a bedroom and bathroom so the first floor is accessible, say, if they want to live there you know, in the, for many, many, many years. He's still quite young. <laughs> um, but again, the office is on grade so that you can use it. It's not above the garage with a stair. Right. So um, that was also a consideration we were looking at. Okay, thank you. Uh, number three, as the, uh, the requested area is uh, very insubstantial. The requested uh, variance of 562 square feet uh, is not substantial. The allow allowable impervious surface coverage is 6.4, including proposed accessory structure. The built area is well under the 10% 10, uh, 10 allowance for the 6.11 acre property. Uh, will the proposed uh, variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in a neighborhood or district? The proposed variance will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in a neighborhood or district. The owner will use the office for his business and the shop for personal use. All right. Now, business, is it going to be a commercial business? I mean, I have an office now, it's just me. You have to step up, oh, please. I'm sorry. Okay. No, I just understand. I don't know whether you're in a commercial neighborhood or not. I'm just trying to say what you're saying. No, no, I, I have an office. Okay. So it's just me and a computer right now. I'm above um, Perks, uh, Phillipstown Square. But it's not, we don't receive packages or anything. I drive out for work. But eventually I want to leave my spare office and just work out of the garage. Are you going to have customers come in the garage? No, we don't have customers. You don't have customers. You don't have customers. What kind of business is it? I do real estate investment and development. Oh, okay. So there's no customers. No, it's all commercial. Oh. We go to you. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Will the uh, blah, 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 blah. Will the full district have effect uh, impact on physical environment, neighborhood? We said no. Uh, the owner will use it as an office. Uh, is the alleged difficulty self-created? This consideration should be relevant to, to the decision of the Board of Appeals, but not necessarily precluding the granting of the area variance. The alleged difficulty is self-created. We would like the Board to consider the benefits of eliminating... Well, that's the first person who said it was your... <laughs> Usually they say it's not self-created, but you, it is self-created because you want to do it. So at least you're, you're honest with that. I'll give you that. Okay. <laughs> We would like the board to consider benefits limiting new construction to a single building that can accommodate multiple needs and future accessibility. Uh, use less material when costs are high and reduce energy uses by reducing the exterior envelope. Okay. And is there anybody in here, with, uh, neighbors, or anybody would like to speak to this? Nobody? Nobody? Okay. Uh, I actually am a neighbor. You're a neighbor? Sort of. Yes. I live on Perks. Okay. I know the property. You're not going to complain, are you? No. Oh, okay, just try. <laughs> no, it's large property. There's there's a lot of space. Okay. No, you have no problem with it? No. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. You're putting a driveway in, and I'm looking at the topography of the land. Are you going to have to put a retaining wall in for the new driveway? No. The I mean, we'll need a... I mean, there'll be a rock wall here for the garage because mm -hmm. we're lowering the garage. But the driveway is following the train. It's, it's following the pitch of the land? Yeah, the, the land, 
Because, um, you know, I see the, uh, uh, there's a quite, quite a change in altitude here. And I was, I was just right. concerned. So we're coming here. Mm -hmm. So the driveway is coming down all this way. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of distance. So you're going to drive uh, up Walmer Lane mm -hmm. and then come down this way. Okay. So there won't be a wall next, next to the driveway is what you're saying? No. Okay. I have one more question. What is this tent with the backhoe? Is that going to be permanently there? The tent? This is here. It's, yeah. yeah. There is a tent. Tent on gravel for backhoe to remain. For right now, yes. We're keeping the tent. Eventually, it, I bought the house that came with a tractor. Tractor's in the tent. Uh, once we're done with everything, and I've been using it to pull garbage out of the woods, I'll probably sell all the tractor, get rid of the tent. But yeah, it's, the tent's in the setback. Is it in the setback? No, it's set back. Yes, it's on the other. It's, it's on a, it's, oh. um, the tent is not a permanent structure. Um, That's what I'm asking. Is it going to be permanent or are you going to take no, it down? No, it will come, it will come down. It's remaining throughout construction and then it will be removed. It's not permanent. It's on okay. a gravel bed, no foundation. Okay. Thank you. So you want that into the, into the, uh, resolution? Yeah. Let the tent come down? Yeah. And would that... So what he's saying is going to put in a resolution that the tent, <coughs> tent will come down after construction. Is that okay with you? Um, I was hoping to keep it for like now, a year or two. Come down. You're saying you're going to keep it. So I said eventually I was going to once I get rid of the tractor. Well, I'm confused. Are you taking it down? Right now our plan is not to take it down. Probably in a year or two I was going to take it down. I misspoke. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my fault. Somebody got to decide what the answer is. You said no, and you say yes. So you're going to keep it. I'd like to leave it unless like it's a condition. That's all we ask. Well, just ask okay. honesty. We ask a simple question. Okay. You like to leave the tent. Now, did that create an issue? Well, it's in a setback, but it's, it's not permanent. So eventually he's taking it down. So it's not going to be a permanent structure. No, he's not. He just said he's going to keep it. He's not keeping it permanently. He said right. he'd like I'm to down. keep it. He's, he's got, he, the house came with a backhoe and a tent. And he kind of likes that backhoe right now. But he doesn't like the backhoe for more than five years, right? Right. Okay. Why can't you just move the tent back a few feet? I try to say, try to, why can't you move the tent to get it out, out of the Because uh, if I move the setback. tent, so you're asking me about the retaining wall? Mm -hmm. It drops, it, the grade naturally drops here. So to move it back, like, I mean, I could relocate it out into this field or something, but then this guy is going to see it because his house is here mm. and this is all open. Here it's sort of in the trees. I can't just move it a little bit. Well, you can see the tent, you can see everything else too, right? This guy? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he probably sees the pool and everything. If I'm standing here, I'm looking at his house. This is all, this is all from here. To there is all cleared. Yeah. All right. Well, Mr. is saying is the tent is in the setback. That's what he's trying to say. That right. it should be, you know, so, which is a violation. So that's what we have to we're looking at. So he's trying to say, can you move it back? That's Isn't what he's there, saying. actually, though, um, is there a concrete pad there as well? No. No, okay. No, it's literally sitting on, um, you know, little uh, concrete pavers. And it's just sitting there. I mean, I could probably take it apart and move it. That's what I'm asking. Why can you? Can you move it? Can you move it out of the setback? I could. I think it's better where it is, but I could move it. Well, I mean, I could explain, like, I could put it here, but there's a house there. If I put it here, this guy sees it. There's no trees or anything protecting it. Can your neighbor see it now? Um, I mean, if you're driving by, you'll see it, but it's gray and they're all trees here. Yeah, but I'm asking, can your neighbor see it? Not somebody driving by on the road. Of, if they're looking out of their house, they cannot see it. If they're on the road, they could see it. Okay. Neighbor can't see it, but you can see it from the road. Thank you. Right. Okay. Any other questions? 
Anybody have? Mm -hmm. Just want to make a motion that the uh, public hearing be closed. Second. I'm oh, sorry, somebody had a question? I happen to be a neighbor. Well, come on up. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to get the bills. Like, well, uh, you need don't be quiet. Come on, we're not going to. Come on. We're not going to beat you up. Come on, come on up here. Well, I'm telling you, just Get up there, speak to us. <laughs> speak now, if I ever hold your peace. I just happened to be here, not for okay. you. <laughs> I knew you were going to be here, but. Who are you? I'm a neighbor. I have What's to drive name? Amy McElwain. What's your full name? No, you have to identify yourself. What's your address? 63 Walmer Lane. So I drive past the house that Adam is moving into every day, all the okay. time. Janice, you know. <laughs> and I have absolutely no problem with the tractor thing. I don't, it's okay. not obtrusive at all. And actually listening to your plans, it sounds like you're really taking into consideration the way the neighbors are going to, you know, experience whatever is going on at your house. Yeah, so... Yeah, so I don't know if that's helpful at all, yeah, but yeah, the, helpful, the tractor yeah. thing is not a bother. Well, yeah, I did behind us. Really <laughs> someday, <laughs> but you know, so we'll you gotta buy it for the tractor, right? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he he bought a different one. But. Okay, yeah, thank so you I don't know if that's helpful. For, thank you very much for input. That's what these meetings are about. These meetings are about for the neighbors to tell us, you know, whether it's good or bad. You know, we don't know. That's what I'm trying to say. So you're the one who lives there. Okay, uh, I make a motion that the public hearing be closed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll make a motion now to, to take a roll call vote on granting the variance. Mr. Stone? I vote, I vote uh, to approve. In favor? Mr. Lynn? I'll approve. Approve? I approve. I approve. Okay. You're all set. Thank you. Okay. Good luck with your track. You got to buy it for the track. <laughs> what else? Come on. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah, we've got to sign up for it. Oh, uh, I forgot to tell you one thing before you leave. Uh, what you can do, uh, what, we have now is a, uh, what we have now is a form. Uh, used to, the way it used to be is the resolution, we'd have to wait for the attorney to print out the resolution, would take like, and by the time we go before, back and forth, it would take another month, okay? Yeah. What we have here now, though, we have is the, uh, uh, thank, to our, thank you to our secretary, we have a new form uh, where I can sign and give you a copy and uh, let's see you could take it tomorrow and get your building permit fantastic Thank okay you we're all done well, that's great. Thank you. that's right <laughs> i've never seen that anywhere i always have to wait 30 days well, thanks to, thanks to our hard work and the building inspector together, they, they put their heads together and they came up with this and uh, we all agreed on it. And what goes before the town board, the town board agreed and uh, this way you're, you're done tomorrow. Go in there and get your building permit. Okay. That takes care of that. Okay, next one. Uh, let's see. Next one is... Uh, application, uh, William Denby, 32 Hudson Way. He's not here. Okay, this is about a uh, freestanding solar system. So <laughs> we'll put it over to next month, uh, which is to be June uh, June 13th. And uh, you can tell them that it's going to be the same thing. You know, it's going to be another couple of months because uh, this is we're not going to approve it tonight. So they'll be starting over again next month. Okay. Uh, the third one we have is uh, Stephen Spirell, 16 Black. Uh, hi. Come up here. Tell us a little bit what you're looking to do here. Yes. Wow. It's your 15 minutes of fame, so be careful, huh? Steven, you want to come to the front? <laughs> come on up. Is, uh, let's read this here. Going further. Okay. The applicant is seeking to install, uh, no, the applicant is seeking a special permit to construct a 987 square foot accessory structure within a park. Okay. Now, is this going to be an accessory <laughs> part? What I mean is, is it going to be rented? No. Yes. So, what, Stephen, Who, why, don't, why don't you speak first? Yeah, sure. you speak about first. the Who use are you? of this? Well, I'm happy to. Thank you, Annie. So, 
This is. Uh, Please just identify yourself. Oh, sure. Uh, Stephen Spruill. Uh, yeah, I'm the owner of 16 Black Diamond Hill, Garrison, New York. Okay. Um, we bought this property back in 2020 during the pandemic for it to be a permanent residence for my parents who were moving from Texas to be closer to their grandchildren. We live in New York City, my wife and I. Uh, and so they are the residents of the property now. Uh, but my wife and I and, my, and our three kids spend a considerable amount of time up there. We were just here yesterday, literally, and I came back up here for this. Um, we're, we're, we spend at least over 100 days at the property. Uh, it's a three-bedroom house. Uh, and so for, uh, you know, considerable part of the year, we've got, you know, seven people staying in a three bedroom house, not to mention the fact that we'd like to start having, you know, holidays, uh, our extended family, my in-laws, my aunt and uncle, my brother and, and uh, sister-in-law, you know, up to visit to, to house. stay at the house. We need a bigger house. We need a bigger house. Right. That's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's uh, the more concise way to put it. Uh, and so, uh, and so the idea is this is a, uh, uh, a place uh, where my wife and I can, you know, be more comfortably ensconced when we're up there. My my three children stay on the uh, the bottom floor of the house. Uh, and they have the the two bedrooms and the run of the place down there. Um, but then also, uh, when we have my in-laws or my brother and sister-in-law, they can stay there too. So that's that's the idea behind this uh, extension. Right. And Annie and I have been working on it for like about a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this, um, the purpose of this meeting is that... Um, this is just to see that we have everything that we need, okay? Yes. And then what we'll do is we'll vote on it, and then we'll set up for a public hearing. Great. Which would be next month, yeah. it would be June Great. 13th. And then your neighbors are sending letters of what, to, what your project yes. is. And that gives them the opportunity to go to town hall, look at the plans or something like that. Fantastic. Or come here tonight at a, uh, of the meeting and have they, have they have any questions. Great, yeah. Okay. So in the package that we submitted to you, we have the architectural plans that are here. Right. We have the structural plans from Mike Carr. We have the um, health department approval from Beatty and Watson, um, their, their site plan. I believe we have everything completed, and we have the site survey um, and the deed. Um, you know, please let us know if we're missing anything. Yeah, I think I, think um, I, 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 I looked it over. I think I see everything here. I think we've included everything. Uh, the purpose, uh, the reason why we were flagged at the building department is that this is a private road right. um, as opposed to a public road. Right. So um, that is why we were sent to you um, to right. have this. Did you fill out the five factor sheet here? Let me see. Let me see that. We filled out the application that Cheryl gave us. Um, Let me see. Hold on. I saw you go through the five factors. Um, I don't know if I saw that on the application that Cheryl sent yeah. us. Um, just, just so you know, it's a special permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not an area variance. Right. They don't have to go through the five factors. They don't have to go through the factors. Right. They just have to satisfy the criteria for a special permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. You see? You Great. Know, this <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The lot is you know two point six seven acres. The current house is plus or minus. Uh, 2.7 acres, 2.7, yeah, 2.7 um, right. acres, and then the house is around 3,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Hey, all right. Well, like I say, we're going to have a public hearing, and everybody will have a chance to uh, speak to them. We just want to get a rough idea of what we're what we're looking Great. at here before yeah. we. Uh, yeah. So fold. it's a so you know it's a it's a, it's a one story accessory structure. Um, it's also one of the other uses is it's for the pool. There's an existing pool there. Um, so it's really used for Stephen and his wife, but then also for pool to just kind of create more usable. It's a very flat area that we're putting it on. So right now it's not being utilized. Um, so to give it some purpose and right. um, Other than for a bocce ball. ball and a small fire pit that's there okay. now. So. so everybody can come. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. One thing, uh, and I'll clarify this with the uh, code enforcement officer. Yeah. Um, just, do you know what a zoning district? At uh, HR. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll reconfirm that because okay. if you look on um, Putnam County Parcel Access, you know, okay. the, the government sure. website yeah. lists it as R40. Oh. Hmm. So we'll, 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 it doesn't Confirm. That was just make what a I difference the, really with okay. respect to your application, but just for accuracy. Absolutely. And I'll check with the building department because they have the zoning map and they will tell you which district yeah, you're great. in. But there's what, what's on part, uh, Putnam 
um, parcel access is different from what the building inspector wrote up. Okay, yeah, so I would love clarification on that as well. Yeah, great. Okay, good. Yeah. Anybody, questions from the board this time, or anybody have any questions? I make a motion that the uh, application is uh, complete as submitted. A second? All in favor? Aye. Okay, you're all set. We'll see you here next see. Uh, see you in month. A month. Uh, yeah, uh, Monday, June 13th. June 13th. Same place, same time. Okay, sounds okay. good. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good night now. Good night. Okay. Okay, any uh, old business? Any new business? I'd like to speak to our uh, councilwoman on new business. Um, do your next, no, no, you have to sit right where you are. Okay, at our next, uh, your next workshop. I'd like to take a look at, we don't have any regulations for 5G. You know, 5G, the doors the, they're gonna put in. And uh, I read an article that, that a lot of towns are starting to have problems with the 5G, because there's no, there's no variance for it. There's no town ordinance for it. 5, 5G for installation, so these, phone companies like that could just put it in, and it's a lot, a lot of problems. I know some problem, towns have, have passed. Do you know any towns, Adam, that passed any regulations? Uh, 5G reg? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are, but I, off the top of my off head. Off the top of your head, know. you don't know. Okay. Well, I'll do some you know, research and see if I can find it, but I'd like to prevent the problem, okay? Yeah. Because, you know, what happened to us with the wind turbine, you know, we had that, and that turned into a circus so uh, we're trying to avoid that so 5g went and see I'll, I'll do some research see if I can find some towns that done it. I know I think beacon may have done it I'm not sure All right, maybe if you can ask too uh, ask uh, Greg maybe he might know or some, some some towns that have done it so just so we can get ahead of the game yeah, sounds good all right whatever because you guys are the ones who make up the zoning you know so uh, you could right. put in whatever you want, I guess. You know, of course, you would work with the attorneys and all like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. That's, That's good. good. I think, ahead of it. I'm sorry? It's a good idea getting ahead of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Well, were we were speaking about it just last week when, when, when we left and we were talking about it. And I read an article. It was, it was from a phone. It was, it was from an attorney who uh, I had for the last, uh, uh, the neighbors hired for the last cell tower we had over in uh, Vineyard. Campanelli was the guy's name, something like that. Andrew yeah. Campanelli, yeah. He yeah. wrote a big article in one of those town magazines, and it said that uh, towns are starting to have trouble with it because yeah. they don't have the ordinance to uh, somebody comes in. Mentioned in one of the town board meetings that it was yeah. coming. Like, All right. It was just kind of like a fly by. So I'll get more information. Get more of it. It was really heavy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> you always second so quickly. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs>